In Matthew chapter 24, this is Jesus here. Amen. This is what he starts out being what is called the Olivet Discourse. And all that means is that he gave a discourse about the end times and the last days while he was in the Mount of Olives. As you will see here, Matthew 24, verses 1 through 8. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came for him to show him all the building of the temple. So they would have been looking across, seeing the glory of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. When Jesus spoke that, amen, uh, it was during his lifetime, of course. And so this would have been somewhere before 32, 33 A.D. Amen. He was prophesying there because the temple was taken down by Rome, burned, and not stone, not one stone was left on top of another in the temple. And that happened in 70 A.D. Verse 3, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately, saying, to him, tell us then, when will these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming at the end of the world? What a great question. Question everybody has. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed first that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, or I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom shall rise against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. In other words, earthquakes where you never heard them before. Verse 8, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. And everything, everything he mentioned up to verse 8 are just the beginning of sorrows. Also go to Revelation chapter 6, Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And it says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, a noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, there was a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Our topic today is end time awareness. End time awareness. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. End time awareness. Jesus, of course where I just read in Matthew 24, was speaking of the end times because the disciples asked him the question about the coming of the Lord in that what's called the last day, as they said. But Jesus gave much more than that, which is so beautiful about the word of God and it's so great, amen, to be a follower of Christ and to be saved because God doesn't leave us in the dark. The scriptures, the word, lets us know exactly what is taking place and exactly what is going to happen. So we have a great advantage, of course, of the world. And even if you say these things to those who don't know Christ, they can't see it. They're blinded. Amen. When you come to Christ, your eyes are opened. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is the light. So when you look at this, it would appear, without a doubt, that we are living in what we call the last days. Now, when we say the last days as it relates to the church, we're talking about here, up to this point in verse 8, the last days of the church age. That usher in, amen, what is called the tribulation period. My God. We're going to explain that a little bit today so that we can tie in some current events that are happening, amen, with what the Bible says today. If you notice that Jesus says in Matthew 24, 6 and 7, he says, You shall hear of wars and rumors of war. 
Well, we certainly have a lot of that going on. And so our main focus, of course, would be the, the conflict and wars and amen and everything that's trying to be done for the war to be escalated in the Middle East. Uh, it, is, it is an amazing time in the Middle East if, amen, you know Scripture. If you don't know Scripture, amen, it's a scary time. And it's a time where you're not sure what is going to happen. But we'll bring some clarity to that today. But Jesus said, but see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Which means that even some of the things that are happening today as it relates to wars, amen, he says, don't be troubled, it's not the end yet. But it's certainly a sign and a warning that the end is coming. Verse 7, then he says, for nations shall rise against nation. There is so much going on right now that it would seem that all the main nations of the world are all involved in what's going on in the Middle East right now. We'll bring clarity in that, of that for you. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places or in places you never heard of before. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. Just the beginning of sorrows. So there's a call here by Jesus Christ and his answer to the question the disciples had of end time warnings. That's why we need end time awareness. And it, it speaks of being ready. That there has to be a readiness from the church to know what's going on because Christ could come back for his church or we could say his bride at any time. So Jesus is saying all this and then in verse 8 he says, and these are the beginning of sorrows, which means this, it's not the actual worst part. It's not the actual sorrowful part. He's saying up to that point, amen, of where we are right now, if you will, he's just saying this is just the beginning of things. This is just the start of something. This is just to let you know that real sorrow is soon to come after this stuff happens. My God. And other interpretations of the Bible, that scripture also means birth pangs. Birth pangs, amen, is a way of saying when a woman is pregnant and close to delivering, contractions happen. But there are two types of contractions. There are what's called, amen, false contractions. Amen. The body is already starting to contract and it would, have seen, it would seem to push, amen, the baby out. But those are false contractions. Amen. But from what I understand, amen, from amen, a woman, is that they still hurt. Amen. There, there's a warning of something, the big event getting ready to happen when the real contractions show up to push the baby to birth. Amen. It's almost like the body getting ready and, amen, trying to ready the mind of, amen, the mother. Birth pain. Amen. Not actual birth, but amen, a prelude to it. And so Jesus is saying here that these are just the prelude to the bigger event, the great sorrow that's going to happen in what we call the tribulation period. My God. So Jesus gives some powerful insight here that we could look at as the church. And then what we read in Revelation chapter 6 is where it introduces the tribulation period. Amen. We don't have time to go into a Bible study of the first five chapters of Revelation, but the first five chapters of Revelation, he's mostly dealing with the church. And then he's dealing with a scene of worship and giving glory to God by the church in heaven. But then in Revelation chapter 6, the church is no longer mentioned. We go into a whole different event. And so we know then that this must be what is called the Great Tribulation Period. It's a seven-year period, which we'll also explain to you here in a minute. My God. 
So we see here then that in order for us to be up in heaven to worship before the tribulation starts, there has to be what we know as the rapture. The rapture is the taking away of the church. It is what scripture promises that Christ will come back in the heavens, amen, and snatch the church out of the earth. You've probably seen it in movies and depicting different things, but it's an actual event that is going to happen. What says this is that, amen, Christ being our groom, if you will, is going to snatch his church out of the world before great sorrow comes. And any good husband would do that to protect his wife, amen, from hurt and pain that could come and get her out of the way. That's how much God loves the church. Amen. Jesus died, hallelujah, for souls to be saved for the church. Therefore, what is the tribulation period all about? Amen. Well, we pick that up in Daniel chapter 9 and 24. And Daniel, amen, even though he's an Old Testament prophet, amen, he gives much insight to Amen. Israel and even the last days. As you know, he interpreted the dream for Nebuchadnezzar when they were in captivity in Babylon. And, and so he gives great insight. But here's one thing about Daniel. He was never given the insight about this period that we are in right now, which is called the church age. He, he has insight about how God is going to deal with his people Israel but, but not the church age. And so therefore, you have to be able to dissect, amen, his timeline. So notice in Daniel 9.24, it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. He's talking about the Jews, Israelites. And notice this. He says these 70 weeks, amen, are, are coming to an end to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. My God. So, so he gives us some insight about, amen, this time frame called the tribulation period. Now in Daniel's prophecy, he talks 70 weeks here. Amen. But what this really is, is 490 years. What it means is, is that there is going to be, God is dealing with his people, amen, in these weeks, if you will. Amen. He deals with Israel for 70 weeks, but each week is a seven-year period, just like there's seven days in a week. So what this really says in our time would be this, that he deals with them for 400 years. In 90 years, right? So, amen. So you have to understand this, that when we take the time, amen, or when the temple was declared to be rebuilt in Daniel's time, amen, and you move forward to the time that Jesus came on the scene and was baptized, we get 69 of those weeks, right? 69 of those weeks or 480 Three years, which means then that there's still a seven-year period where God is going to deal with Israel. You think, well, wouldn't that have gone? No, the clock stopped. The clock stopped because, amen, there was this mystery of God. And the mystery of God from the very beginning in the Old Testament and, and certainly to Israel is this, that he is going to open up salvation to everybody in the world, not just the Jew. That he's going to open it up to Gentiles, which I'm assuming most of us in here are Gentiles. If you're not a Jew, if you're not born in Israel, you are considered a Gentile. Amen. That is something that Israel never saw, and still probably many of them don't see it today. But God loves everybody, so he opens up this dispensation called the church age, which started on the day of Pentecost when the church was born. Hallelujah. And here's the thing. We don't know when the church age actually ends. There's no time frame because if we knew the time frame, we could say with certainty the exact year the tribulation would start. 
But guess what? The 70 weeks that stopped at 69 weeks is at hold for Israel until God takes his church out of here. And then the clock starts again. That clock starting again is where we pick up the scene in Revelation chapter 6. So, amen. Here's what's so amazing, and here's the awareness. One of the uh, things that we need to be aware of is this, that if we're seeing things happening today in the world that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, and he says this is just the beginning of sorrows. But from Matthew 24, 9 on, he begins to deal with Israel. So there's a pause there as if the church is already out of here. My God. Amen. Let me just throw this in right now. Amen. Believer of Christ, don't miss the rapture. Amen. Be looking for God. Be living for God. Amen. Be worshiping God at all times. Amen. Don't let anything take you back into the world. My God. So, notice this was one of the great encouragements to the early church. That Jesus is coming. And Jesus is coming soon. My God. Now think about that. The church is almost 2,000 years old. But even back then, they were looking and longing and desiring for the Lord to come back for them. Some would say, yeah, I've been hearing that message preached all my life. Jesus is coming back soon. He ain't coming back soon. Amen. Wrong attitude. He could come at any moment. Amen. And let me say this. Your rapture might be in a car accident. Your rapture might be in something else taking you out of here. So you got to be ready at all times. You got to have end time awareness. It's an amazing thing that we were born in this time. Amen. How many ever wish that you were born maybe, maybe in a time of, of David? And you were there when, amen, he killed Goliath. Amen. Let me just say this. We ain't ready for that. Amen. Because we like things quick. We like our microwaves. We like it, all the necessities of life. Amen. We like, amen. We want to eat something right now. We can just go get it. You want to eat something there? Amen. You got to, amen, break the wheat down, crush the wheat down. Amen. Amen. And grind it up and then make it into a flour. Amen. Then knead it with everything and then, amen, and then bake it, which means you had to, you had to heat up, amen, a kiln-like thing and all that. And so if you wanted bread today, you might get it in about six or seven hours. Amen. Now, you want a donut? You just drive down and get one. Amen. My God. So, no, God made us for this time. But it says this also, amen, that he made us for this time for a reason. He made us this time, and he gave us a grace, amen, for this time. So, here's this time. Our time for the church is that we're going to worship you, Lord, no matter what, no matter how bad this world gets, no matter how much evil is rampant in our land, amen, we're going to keep worshiping you and honoring you and exalting you and looking for you to come back. But there was time in the early church they would get discouraged. Amen. How many ever been discouraged? I've said this prayer many times. You know what, Jesus, today's the perfect day to come on back because I can't deal with this no more. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 and 17 says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So, so what Paul is saying here to the church is they were concerned that they were having, amen, those who were in the church, those who were saved, some of them were dying. And their concern was they missed the Lord coming back for them. They miss the rapture. So Paul is encouraging them that, amen, don't worry. Just because they go to sleep, just because they've already passed on, amen, God will come for them too. So he says in verse 16, for the Lord himself, hallelujah, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. What a great scene. 
And one day the Lord is going to crack the heavens open, the atmosphere, the sky, and it says he's coming down himself. He's going to descend out of heaven, and he's going to shout a shout of gladness because he's coming to get his bride. Amen. And it says there'll be a trumpet, and the archangel, amen, will declare, amen, a, a trumpet and a shout, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's okay. People might think you're crazy, but let them know. If one day I just disappear, amen, it's because the Lord got me. The Lord came for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One day we're just going to get snatched out of here, if you will. Amen. In, in, in Corinthians it says, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. It's not going to be a big, massive scene. Amen. It's not even a blink of the eye. It's the twinkle of an eye. Amen. And in that moment, amen, half a moment, millisecond, amen, boom, we're just going to be out of here. It's going to happen quick. Because God is quick and powerful. Hallelujah. So when that happens, we get, amen, to this scene in Revelation chapter 6, which starts this seven-year tribulation period. Now, there's a purpose for this seven-year tribulation period, and that is what Daniel was talking about in Daniel 9.24. And so let's go through those. There were six purposes he came up with concerning that tribulation period. The first one was to finish transgression. To finish transgression. This is going to be a time of suffering for Israel. Amen. Because they have rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah. It's hard for us to even consider that today. Amen. Because we understand that Christ went to the cross. That Christ is the Savior of the world. That he is the Messiah. That he is God with us. That he came down. We know the gospel. Amen. That Jesus lived a life in this earth without sin. Amen. And went to the cross as our lamb to be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And then give us his righteousness. That Jesus is so awesome and so powerful that death couldn't hold him. Amen. So they put him in a grave. They put him in a tomb. Amen. But just like he said on the third day, he got up. Amen. He resurrected. Resurrected, and it says he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. In other words, he snatched death away from the devil. Amen. The devil always had that card he could throw on someone to take them out by death. But Jesus came down and said, give me my keys back. Amen. I know Adam and Eve lost it, but I'm here to get it back. Amen. Because Jesus says, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. And anyone who comes to me, amen, shall not have death, but have everlasting life. Jesus conquered, and then after walking around 40 more days on the earth, showing himself to his disciples and getting them back together because they were hiding when he was crucified, he got them back together, amen, spoke into their life, amen, go and receive the Holy Spirit who is Christ as a comforter in us, and then you shall have power to carry on my church, amen, to, to, to get my bride together which will be from all nations. So it's amazing that here it is 2,000 years later, and Israel, for the most part, still doesn't see that Jesus was their Messiah. Amen. Have you noticed this, that even if you kind of not on as fire for God as you used to be, it just takes one little hardship to bring you back. Right? One hardship, one disappointment, one tragedy, it will bring you back. That's what hardship does to us. All of a sudden, we have time to pray. We have time to come to the Lord. We're crying out to God constantly. That's what hardship does. Amen. And that's what the seven-year period is about. It's going to bring great hardship to Israel. And then their eyes will be open, and they will see that Jesus was their Messiah. Now, because they're not looking for Jesus now, here's the problem that, amen, they might still accept someone else as the Messiah. 
which would be what we call an antichrist. He talks like, appears like Christ, amen, may even be able to do some miraculous things like Christ, but he's the devil. Oh, my. So it says this purpose of the tribulation, then, is to finish the transgression of them rejecting Jesus as the Messiah. But it's going to be interesting that during this seven-year period, amen, their eyes are going to become open. And God is going to raise up ministers. And he's going to raise up, amen, men that are going to be holy and love God, amen, from the 12 tribes of Israel. Remember the 12 tribes of Israel? That's how God started Israel. Amen. Now they're going to know what tribe they're from. And God's going to raise up 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. And you're going to have 144,000 on fire evangelists that know Jesus as Savior. And they're going to go throughout the world and preach the gospel and many are going to be saved it's going to be a time also of their eyes being opened during this time but the awareness of the Messiah will come upon them Daniel said to put an end to sin the word put an end means really to seal it up hallelujah at the end of this tribulation period what is the Lord going to do he's going to seal up sin so in Revelation, it tells us, amen, that he's going to take the devil. He's going to take Satan and seal him up and bind him, amen, for a thousand years. So he's going to throw him into the bottomless pit. That tells you something about God when you have a pit that doesn't have a bottom. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. And the devil's just going to be falling for a thousand years. Amen. In this pit of darkness, my God. In other words, can you imagine life after the tribulation period, a thousand years, Jesus will be on, in control on the earth, and there'll be, amen, no sin, no devil to tempt anybody, amen. There won't even be death during the thousand years, amen. It says the lion and the lamb will lay down together. Amen. You won't have to separate animals at the zoo anymore or in the wilderness. They're just all happy and hanging out with each other. That's even a greater thing to think that all people will be able to hang out and love one another. Just as God declared it in the very beginning. He's going to put an end or he's going to seal up sin. Then it says to atone for wickedness. This also speaks of this great revival, this reconciliation to God during this time. Remember, it was, the Israel, it was Israel, it was a Jewish people that said to Pilate, crucify him and let his blood be on us and our people. And they've had endured great persecution and oftentimes great isolation maybe because of that statement. But here, one thing about God, he don't give up on something he says is his. And he still loves Israel, amen, but he'll do what he has to do to bring them to repentance. Daniel goes on to say to bring in everlasting righteousness, my God, that there's going to be this age of righteousness. Again, this thousand-year reign of Christ on the earth, amen. It's going to usher in, the tribulation period is going to usher in everlasting righteousness. Daniel says to seal up vision and prophecy. Amen. After the, after the tribulation period, there'll be no more reason for prophecy, right? Because everything now has come to pass. The prophets will no longer need to have visions about what's going to happen. Amen. Shows you how much of the end it is because it's already been prophesied and already been seen. And to anoint the most holy. This could refer to, amen, the, the new temple that will be built because during the thousand years there will probably be temple worship, amen. It will be a time where, where Israel has a full understanding that Jesus was that lamb, amen. It's also on the area of the temple mount where Abraham offered up Isaac, amen, that all pointed symbolically toward Jesus Christ, amen, that Jesus Christ was that lamb and that Messiah, amen, that takes the place of all of us that ha should have been uh, killed and, and, and offered, amen, but Jesus came in to do that. Thank you, Jesus. And now they will see Jesus. Can you imagine when Jesus shows up on the scene at the end of the tribulation period and Israel looks at him, amen, and they'll see him still with the holes in his hands? And the holes in his feet. 
amen, and the cavity in his side where they speared him, amen, and they will begin to worship him and honor him. Thank you, Jesus. So before you can have all the goodness of the millennial reign, the thousand-year reign of Christ, amen, God has to bring everybody toward him, and he uses the tribulation period to do that. Thank you, Jesus. And so the tribulation period then, amen, again, starts in Revelation 6, 1 and 2. And probably many of you heard this, but it deals with, amen, a first set of judgments in the seven-year period that God is going to bring upon the earth. And there, the three sets are, they're called the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, and the bowl judgments. But you have to understand the first one to understand the others. Because this is going to be a time of great deception by the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is going to have power that he's never had before. Amen. There's going to be, amen, a time of great deception. Let me say this. There's one thing about Israel today, and it is this. They are not easily deceived. They're good at deceiving. Amen. If you've been keeping up on world events, amen. I mean, when you can intercept, amen, all of these, I forget how many it is, and I think it was 1,200, amen, pagers. You all know what I'm talking about? Amen. And, and so what happened was is Iran was passing all these pagers to all their leaders in, in Lebanon, amen. And, and so, and then in one day, all the pagers explode. At the same time, oh, Israel, you bad. Amen. And so these, these were actually soldiers, amen, in, in the army uh, in Lebanon against them, against Israel. And so, amen, can you imagine, amen, they were able, amen, to, when, when Hamas and, and Iran and, and all of those, when they, amen, were trying to set up a communication system that, that Israel, amen, could not intercept. Their problem was the way they were communicating, Israel could understand it and then know their move when they were getting ready to make. So Hezbollah, the leaders of Hezbollah says, we need to get some old school pagers. You all know what I'm talking about? We used to call them beepers. Now you know what I'm talking about? You still don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, amen. You'd have this thing on the side, amen. I almost looked like a cell phone, and, and it would go off. Beep, 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 beep. And then you'd look at it, amen, and it would tell you who to call. Of course, the modern-day beepers can have a message on there just like if you were to get a text. And so this is how they would communicate, and it was done on a radio frequency so that way it couldn't be intercepted and detected. The problem was, is that when they ordered these from a Taiwanese company, the Taiwanese company, amen, said that they gave the order to, I think it was a, a company in Holland to put the order together, but you can go ahead and use our technology and all that. Well, somewhere in there, we don't know how, Israel was able to intercept all that, get the order together, put their little explosive devices in them, and had them delivered. And so one day, beep, 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 beep. And, and here Israel even said we gave it a 30-second delay so they would come up and look at it in hopes that it would be fatal. Many were blinded, amen. Many, amen, their sides were taken out and all kinds of stuff. And you can see video of it, amen, on YouTube. Don't go there now. Let's finish the message. <laughs> amen. <laughs> when they went, to Holland, I believe it was Holland. When they went to Holland to find this company, guess what? The building was empty. Which means God, in his love for Israel, have given them some amazing intelligence and wherewithal that they're able to pull stuff like that off. So if that wasn't enough, the next day, all those who had walkie-talkies, they blew up. Can you imagine if you're Hezbollah? Like, you ain't using nothing. Don't turn on the microwave. Don't, nothing. Because they would have been so afraid, which was part of the mental warfare that happens in a lot of warfare in the Middle East. So, so amen, this writer then, my God, 
and that it talks about in Revelation 6, 1 and 2, amen, it, it depicts him on a white horse, amen, and he's riding in, and he has a bow, but he doesn't have any arrows, but he has a crown of victory, and the white horse also says that he is victorious, my God. So, so this is a symbolism of someone who is out to conquer but doesn't need an arrow. Think about that. I'm going to conquer. I'm going to have the world in my hand, but I don't even need to fight. Woo. Antichrist. Amen. Let's look at a few scriptures about the Antichrist so you have better understanding. End time awareness. 1 John 2.18. John says, little children, it is the last time. <laughs> and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that this is the last time. Now, last time there can really mean this is the last hour of the church. Last hour of the church. So, amen. This is written over 1,900 years ago, and he is saying to the church, this is the last hour of the church. Amen. Talking about an anti or the spirit of antichrist. Amen. That there's a lot of little antichrists running around that, amen, they're just here to bring deception. They're here to fool God's people. The early church had to deal a lot with this, amen, where people would come in and begin to teach doctrines away from Christ and teach other false doctrines. And so they recognize that as deception. It's the spirit of antichrist. And so he's saying the antichrist is already here. And there's many antichrists. This is why, amen, you can't listen to everything and everybody. Amen. And even me, you better check your word, amen, after I speak it and make sure it's right. The only thing that's right is this word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when people try and get too deep in interpretation, watch out. Because I have found this, that what people do is they can take a word and twist it around for their benefit, for their selfishness, even for their own sin. Well, I don't see anywhere in Scripture it says that. But you already know it's wrong. Amen. Jesus couldn't, the word couldn't spell out every single sin, but there's a principle there. And trust me, all sin falls into, falls into some type of category. My God. So Antichrist is already, that spirit is already. You see it in the world. Amen. Remember, I don't know if you can remember years and years and years and years ago when we had the first shooting. When, when someone dared, amen, fire shots at elementary school kids right here in our backyard. And we thought that was appalling. But here we are now in 2024, and it's a regular occurrence. It's a regular occurrence. That's why, amen, you better watch out where you go. Amen. I don't like to go where there's crowds. This is the only crowd I like right here. Amen. Because you don't know some crazy somebody. Amen. Just might want to shoot everybody up. My God. Amen. And please don't come to church packing unless it's been approved. <laughs> and don't look at anybody and say, are you packing? Do you have approval? <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. I know one thing. If anybody comes in here and tries to shoot us up, amen, someone better pick up a chair and knock them down. You just got to charge them. And I say this all the time. I say, we got a lot of men here that can handle that. But... That rascal better watch out for these sisters, too. <laughs> Shoot. I mean, you can look at my pockets and know I'm not packing, but I don't know what's going on in some of them purses. <laughs> Looks like you brought luggage to church. I don't know. Switchblades and everything else might come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Spirit of Antichrist better not come up in here. Amen. I'll be trying to pray his life back and Jesus heal him before he dies. Uh, I, I'm not sure where all that came from. This was a, a pretty serious message. Amen. So, so notice John here speaking about this, this last hour of the church. He's saying this is already at work. 
In 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 and 4, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, brothers and sisters, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind. He's saying to the church that's congregating, don't be shaken in your mind or troubled, neither by spirit, don't be troubled by word, neither by a letter as from us. You know, see, here's what the devil will do. He tries to bring in doubt. To try and bring in doubt about your salvation and, and doubt about your life and doubt about how you're living and doubt if even Jesus loves you. He said, don't be troubled by that. Amen. For the, as the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, the devil is going to act up even more against you the closer Christ is coming. Amen. How many, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of the devil been messing with you over time? That's because Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Everyone's hand should be up. Yeah, yeah. The devil, he's at work. Yeah. So it goes on to see, let no man deceive you by any means. You see, here's the problem. Amen. When we're going through hardship in this life, we'll almost reach out to anything or anybody we can get help from. And if anybody offers you help, but it comes with conditions, you know that's the devil. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there comes a falling away first. That's sad. That means there's people in the church that aren't going to make it. They're going to fall away. When you start seeing people fall away and leave, my God, know that the time is even closer than it is. Amen. For all of you watching online, this is serious, so put your coffee down. Amen. Stop cooking the eggs and bacon and pay attention. Because <laughs> you don't know that's what you do when you're not here on church and watching online. <laughs> My hand's up too whenever that happens. Yeah. So he says, let no man deceive you by any means. That day shall not come instead of be a fallen away first. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Perdition means antichrist who is destined for destruction. Who opposeth, here it is, and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Ooh. There it is. That event happens in the tribulation period. So, so when this rider's coming in on this white horse, he's able to make peace. Watch this. He's going to be able to make peace with Israel. And then he's going to set himself up in the temple to be worshipped as the Messiah. And for a short time, much of Israel will be deceived and say, because he was able to give us peace, this must be the Messiah. They'll be fooled. And now he's going to set himself up for everybody to worship him in the whole world. Jesus spoke of this event in Matthew 24, 15, that same chapter where we just started. He says, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. The devil's bold. He go out, set himself up in a temple. So that means there's a temple that has to be rebuilt. And he's going to sit in the temple and say, I'm God. Well, he tried to do that before. That's what got him kicked out of heaven. But he hasn't given up on his plan. And so Jesus refers to it as an abomination of desolation. Revelation 13, 16, and 18 shows us what he'll do to get the worship of the world. It says, and he causeth all. Everyone in the world, both small and great, don't matter who you are, rich or poor, free or bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. There it is. This is how he's going to get everybody to worship him. Right? You're going to have to take a mark on your right hand or on your forehead. That no man might buy or sell unless he has that mark. Or it could be the name of the beast or the number of his name. My God. And here is wisdom. Let him that understand count the number of the beast, for it's the number of man, and his number is 603 score and 6, which we know as 666. 
Now you have to understand the devil is deceptive. So the 666 could be inside the marking. For all we know, the marking that you would have to take could be invisible. But some people will wear it boldly and say, oh yeah, I follow the beast. Amen. And probably get a tattoo on their forehead. We don't know. But we know this, that scripture gives us some insight about what the Antichrist is going to do to make everybody worship him. Because if you don't take the mark, you can't buy or sell. Where are you going to get your groceries? Where are you going to get you need to survive? How, where are you going to live? You're going to have to be on the run trying to avoid the mark. It would have been better just to come to Jesus, amen, before all this happens than to try and exist through the tribulation period. My God. That's why we need end time awareness. Amen. So that event right there happens in the middle of the tribulation period. Amen. Three and a half years in, that's when that event is going to happen. But Jesus told them in Matthew 24, amen, he told them, when you see that happen, he told his disciples, of course, that means Israel, amen, run for your life. And he says, and run quickly. Amen. Amen. You don't have time to even gather your stuff. Get out and flee to the mountains. So what is God saying? That even during this time, if his people recognize that this is the Antichrist and avoid the mark and they run to the mountains, guess what? God will protect them somehow in the mountains. God is going to watch over his people. But if you take the mark, you're gone. You're lost. Hallelujah. So the deception is the rider on the white horse. Amen. The rider on the white horse. And so this is important for us to understand as we even look at current events today, right? So we know this. The rider on the white horse is going to conquer, and he's bent on conquering, right? But remember, he has a bow in his hand, which means it's warfare, but he doesn't have an arrow, which means this, that his conquest is going to be by diplomacy, not war. In other words... He's going to be so charismatic and sharp that he's going to be able to get everybody to come on his side and bring peace in the world. Ooh. Now, now I want you to note, when we're looking at what's going on right now in the Middle East, amen, what is everyone screaming for? Peace. Except for the people who are fighting. The people who are fighting understand this, or certainly Israel understands this. They see this as a spiritual war. Amen. They understand that Iran has already said that they want to exterminate Israel. Well, here's something you may or may not know. They say the same thing about America. In fact, they look at America as the great Satan, and they look at Israel as the little Satan. You know why? Because, amen, America supports Israel. And so Israel has, amen, some of the same things, amen, that America has. A democracy with freedoms and choices people can make. But those countries, amen, in Iran and Libya and all that, they don't allow that. It's a dictatorship. That's why, unfortunately, all the people in those areas are very poor because they take in all the money, the leaders take in all the money to build up their warfare, to build up their missiles, to build up everything that they have. And they've been firing missiles, amen, at Israel since October 7th of last year. It's one thing when it started, but this thing is still going on. Now, now, America, I'm giving you current event, we're tying this in. Now, America doesn't want this thing to escalate. Amen. But at the same time, they're going to help Israel, which is a good thing. We want to help God's people because Scripture says, who blesses Israel will be blessed. Amen. Right? We're all, the church, we're grafted in. We're grafted Israel. Amen. Salvation was first to the Jew, but next to the Gentile. And you have to understand that God loves his people, even though they rejected him as the Messiah. But he's got a plan for that, and this is what starts the plan for their eyes to be awakened. So, so here's the thing. You have to understand Eastern culture, which is, is difficult for us to understand from Western culture. But, but the reason those countries, Iran and those countries, hate us so much is because... We live free. 
We don't live under dictatorship, right? That's why, that's why they don't allow women to have rights, right? Women can't vote. Women can't work. Women got to be covered up. Women got to, amen, they don't get to do nothing. Amen. They oppress, and they oppress their people, and they take all the wealth for themselves. But they feel this is their mission, amen, that they have to exterminate to have a world the way they want it. Amen. They have to get rid of America. Well, here's the thing. Amen. Israel, amen, has the same freedoms that America has. They've adopted the same freedoms. Amen. They, they, they have the same form of government where people are voted in. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Even to this point, even to this, you'll never see those leaders in those countries, Iran and, and Lebanon and all that, they never wear ties. You know what? Because that's a Western thing. So, so it doesn't matter, amen. That's why, that's why they'll wear those round collars instead when, when it's something that's important, amen. Or most of the time with their suits, they're just hanging out like me, but I love Jesus, amen. I don't always wear a tie, hallelujah. They just have their, their shirt open here, amen. And so even to that point, that's how much they hate us. My God. So, so think about this. For over a year now, over a year now, America has been trying to bring peace. It, it is amazing. And not just them, other countries from Qatar and Egypt and all that, trying to bring peace to stop the war in Hamas. Hamas, amen, who, amen, is in the Gaza Strip, October 7th of last year. They just came across, amen, and they attacked the city on the border of Israel. Amen. On that day, 1,200 people were murdered. Amen. If you look at some, there's not a lot of it out there, but if you look at some of the videos of that, I mean, they were just walking up and shooting people in cars. They were walking up and running into homes and just shooting people in homes. Didn't matter if you were a child, a mother, father, whatever. And then they took hostages. Amen. And the hostages they took, amen, the few hostages that have been able to get back, they know that they've been raped and passed around by the Hamas soldiers. Just, just, just pure evil. And, and so, but so Israel says, that's it. We're going to get rid of Hamas. And they're taking everything out because the problem is Hamas, amen, uses Palestinian people as human shields. So they hide, amen, under hospitals and schools and everything. Amen. And so Israel, who does this in war? Israel, amen, tries to warn them, drop leaflets and everything from the sky, amen, get on their communication systems in their language and tell them, amen, we're coming to this town, you need to evacuate. But many of them either don't or they can't because Hamas won't let them leave because if they leave, they'll kill them. And so then what happens? You're going to have a lot of civilian casualties in this type of war. And, and so people are up in arms about that. Like, how could they kill civilians? Amen. There's also mothers and babies in there. Let me tell you something. This is like it is in the Old Testament. You see, we don't get that in Western culture. Amen. Amen. In Western culture, amen, if we know there's a baby and a woman in the house and someone's holding them kidnapped, amen, we're going to call SWAT and we're going to wait them out. They don't play that in Eastern culture. Amen. Is there a terrorist in there? He's coming out. And they go in and get him. Bomb him. Do whatever they have to do. I know we don't get that. Amen. But that's Old Testament stuff. You have to understand that spirit of warfare goes way back. And just so you know, Iran is Old Testament Persia. Uh, current events, current events, current events. My God. So now the situation, Israel just took out, took out the Hamas leader, the Hamas leader, Sinwar. Amen. They've been trying to find him, but if you look at the news this week, how many of you know what's, what I'm talking about? Some of you are like, no, Pastor, I'm hearing this for the first time. Anyway, it's okay. That's why we're here. It was a firefight. Something happened to him. He got wounded. Amen. Israel sends a drone into the house because they thought the house would be booby trapped. And there's Sinwar sitting there, his hands blown off. He's got, amen, a mask on. And he's looking really weird like he's in this chair. He's, he's basically bleeding out probably, amen. And you see this drone taking a picture of him. 
and he actually grabs a stick and tries to hit the drone. Amen. You can see it on YouTube. Just don't look now. And amen. And so then what they did when they recognized that it was a terrorist, they still didn't know it was him, amen. They sent a, a tank, amen, in there and blew it up. And then when they went in to go in there the next day, amen, they recognized it was him. They cut off his finger, sent it to Israel for DNA, amen, and found out it was him. It was Sinmar. The reason they had DNA on him, because at one time he was a prisoner in Israel. They released him, amen, on, a, on an exchange program, amen. In fact, I believe it was in captivity over 20 years in Israel. And watch this. In that time, he got a tumor in his brain, and it was cancerous. And Israel performed the surgery to save his life. And then released him in a prisoner exchange, and then he's the one who headed up this attack against these Israeli civilians. So that meant all our war. Israel says we're going to, so America's been trying to get them, slow down, don't do this, don't do that, all kinds of stuff. Well, now when Iran sent missiles into Israel, Israel said, now we have the right to bomb Iran. But everyone's saying, don't, don't do it. And even Iran has said, go ahead and bomb us, but you can't touch our nuclear facility and you can't touch our oil refineries, but go ahead and bomb the other stuff. Because they already know it's coming. You have to understand that daily, since October 7th of last year, amen, out of Lebanon, amen, Hezbollah has been firing missiles. They got thousands and thousands of missiles as Israel does. The problem is, is now, amen, they're using these missile drones and they're getting deeper into Israel. Israel has this amazing defense system against missiles. They call it David's Sling. And most of the time, it knocks everything out. But now there's some getting through. And rumor is, they're running out of stuff to block. So guess who's there to help now? America has sent a team of their own. They're coming with their own missile de defense system and a team to operate it. My God. You see what's going on in the world? At the same time, amen, President Biden is trying to say we need to bring peace. Israel, don't bomb Iran because here's the problem. That if Iran gets so pushed into a corner, what they will do is they're going to tell everybody they have in the world to now fight. Think about that. Which means every, amen, Iranian, Houthi, Hezbollah, Hamas, every cell in the world are going to go off. And they don't have any problem taking themselves out to take out more than them. Let me ask you this. How many of those cells are in our, in our neighborhoods? How many are in some of those houses? Say, man, are you wondering, what's going on up in there? There's always people coming in and out of there. Or, or, or they're just going to hide. They, they, they can appear to be a part of us. Amen. We never thought 9-11 would happen. How, how does someone get in here? Amen. Watch this. Train in America to learn how to fly a plane, hijack, hijack a jet with that ability, and go into the Twin Towers. How does that happen under our nose? Because we're Western society. Amen. Everybody, come on. Join the party. Belong. Amen. This is what America's all about. That's fine, except there's some evil people coming in too. Here's the thing. Some of those people were trained in our backyard. Amen. They, they were trained right out there at the airport in Santee. Amen. There's all kinds of, of uh, amen, schools out there. Amen. That's where they trained. Amen. Gillespie Field. Amen. That's where my son was working. Amen. Thank God he moved to Montgomery. Amen. But they're still there, too. It don't matter. He's the one to help them land. Amen. And take off and land and take off. You don't know. It's all around us. So can you imagine? And so here's the thing. America knows this, that if they go all out against Iran, boom, everything's going to go off everywhere. End time awareness, church. End time awareness. And, and, and as a pastor, amen. Amen. It's important for me to warn you, warn God's people. 
This is, I mean, I mean, I've been watching this kind of stuff every day since this war started last October. Every day um, I'm looking at stuff and stuff because I'm looking to see how close are we to the Lord coming back. Because here's it. Here, so here's this. What if in all this someone shows up and he's able to make peace? He has Israel happy, Iran happy. Amen. Terrorist groups in Lebanon happy. Hamas happy. The Egyptians happy. China, who's getting involved now. Russia, who's getting involved now on Iran side. Amen. Now he makes the whole world happy and is able to bring peace. It seems impossible, right? But what if that's the rider on the white horse? What if that's the rider on the white horse? That someone can make peace? Amen. And then Israel would have to say, since they got, they're surrounded by their enemies, Israel would have to say, this must be the Messiah. Because he's for us and brought us peace. And he's able to keep everyone to keep from continuing to fight us. Now, as I said all that, understand this. We don't know the timetable of God. We only have the warnings. Scripture also says this, that God is long-suffering. Not willing that any should perish. In other words, God, we can have this right now that we need to pay attention to, but this may not be it. This thing, this thing could go on. We could continue on for hundreds of years because God wants to see people saved. Because, amen, he wants time to have people still respond to the gospel. Or it could happen this week. So what are we supposed to do? Keep our eyes on it. Amen. And I'll keep my eyes on it. Amen. If you don't want to. Amen. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. About what's going on. So when we see current situations and we see all these groups rising up against Israel. Amen. And, and now when, when things, missiles and everything else are going to start getting depleted. And, and, and what is this going to cost everybody? What is this going to cost America? We're sending. Oh, and then yesterday, I think it was yesterday, the day before. Let me add this. Amen. For the first time in I don't know how many years, America brought out their stealth bombers. What do you know about the stealth bombers? They brought the stealth bombers, which, which these things have a payload in them that they can penetrate bombs, go down, amen, to where weapons are deep into tunnels. And so they bomb some strategic spots Amen. In Yemen against the Houthis. You say, well, who are the Houthis? Okay. <laughs> the Houthis is another, ter another terrorist group, and they've been bombing, amen, ships in the Mediterranean Sea. That's kind of where their focus is. Though lately they've been sending missiles over to attack Israel also. So America has taken it upon themselves to try and protect the Red Sea. Amen. And so... They've had some success and not some success. And that's why we're seeing more of our uh, Navy fleet going toward that area. But, but America's realizing now that the only way we're going to stop that from happening is we got to take out their arsenal. we got to take out all their missiles. So they brought out the stealths. Two of them. The thing about the stealths is they can go like, I don't know, halfway around the world and not need fuel. That's how massive that thing is. And their payload is ridiculous. I mean, they have, there's some warheads on some of the bombs in there that have uh, nuclear capabilities. When America starts bringing out the stealth, you know what they're saying? Y'all need to calm down. They're trying, they're trying to usher in some kind of peace or get everyone to calm down. Because if you make us flex our muscles, I don't know if we would, but we're trying to show them that we can flex and do what we need to do, my God. Because, but, but trust me, even getting that stealth out to use it like that, amen. The stat I saw, I don't know how true this is, it costs a billion dollars to fly it on one mission. Now, you know America can't afford that. And we certainly don't want our taxes to go up. Because we like our Western society. We want to have fun, and amen, I need my vacation money. I want to go out to eat at least once a week. My God, hallelujah. So here we are over a year now, and it's something we have to watch. 
problem is with war is that many innocent get killed on all fronts. Doesn't matter what side you're on, innocent people are being killed because of evil. Good and evil at war with each other. Amen. So we're going to close this right now. Amen. And so my mission today, my assignment from God was this. Amen. God said, let my people know of what's going on in the world. Scripture shows that we need end time awareness. It's not a time to be playing. It's not a time to be dabbling with sin. Amen. It's not a time, amen, to get to the edge of sin. Amen. You get too close to sin, amen, you might fall off. It's not time for that. Back up. Back up off it. Amen. It's a time to be dug into the Lord. It's a time to worship. It's a time to keep God first in your life. If there's anything in your life that ain't right, all we have to do is bring it to the Lord. He loves us. Amen. It's a time to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you're not baptized in Jesus' name, don't mess around. Make your salvation sure. Make your salvation sure according to the word of God. They said to Peter, what do we do? He said, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us all stand right now. I finish with this scripture in Matthew 25, 13. Jesus said, Where, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man cometh. He says, watch, because you don't know when I'm coming. You don't know the day and you don't know the hour when I will come back for the church. Hallelujah. I'm going to open this altar right now for any need that you have. Hallelujah. Then we have a few announcements for you, but come on down. Amen. Ministers, come forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever your need is today, the Lord is here to meet it. He loves you. He loves his church. Hallelujah. You need a healing today. You need deliverance today. Hallelujah. Amen. You just want to get your heart right with God and come up here and worship. Amen. Just come on up and worship. Amen. But whatever your need is today, hallelujah, come on up. Thank you, Jesus. Abba, io mosaia.
Anybody else? Anybody else need prayer today? Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. We have a baptism. Hallelujah. We want to give time at the altar. We're getting the baptism ready. We do have some announcements. You may be seated. Amen. If you just have to leave, amen, you can leave your, your offering in the back as you're going out. But amen. Let's dismiss in unity today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The key also to this message is this. We're not looking for the Antichrist to show up. We're looking for Jesus to show up. Hallelujah. Because we're the church. Hallelujah. All right. Sorry, William. Go ahead. Good morning, North Park. We hope that you have enjoyed the service today and that your soul has been filled and your spirit has been lifted. Here are your announcements for the week. The Prestige Awards honors Brother Willie Gibson with the Unsung Hero Award. 
on Saturday, November the 16th at 5 p.m. at the MLK Center, located at 6134 Benson Avenue. Tickets are only $65. Tickets will include red carpet festivities, the show, and dinner. If you are interested in purchasing tickets, please see Sister Lena Swindo. Again, the Prestige Awards honors Mr. Willie Gibson. Happy Clergy Month to our pastor, Pastor Mark A. Garcia. Thank you for being a great and wonderful blessing to our lives. Thank you for your love, support, encouragement, and words of wisdom, and even rebuke at times. You preach, you teach, you train, you cultivate, preparing us to operate in our purpose and our calling, and one day to reign with the King. Your sacrifice, dedication, and commitment has not gone unnoticed. You serve and give of yourself freely, and with a heart of gratitude, we celebrate you. Thank you for the freedom to worship and being a fine example of what worship looks like. But most of all, we thank you for being you. For when God gave us you, he gave us the best. Continual favor be your portion this day and the days to come. We love you much, sir, and God bless you. North Park, mark your calendars for Family and Friends Day on Sunday, November the 10th. The person that brings the most family or friends or both will receive a gift. More information to come. Family and Friends Day, Sunday, November the 10th. Greetings North Park, this is Lucretia with the Food Pantry Ministry. First, let me thank all of those who have already given towards our Thanksgiving drive. Thank you so much, we really appreciate you. And if you haven't given yet, there's still time. We're asking all those who can, please give $30 towards our Thanksgiving turkey drive. And we are continuing to collect donations up until the first week of November. Again, thank you for your giving. When you talk about giving, what you're able to give can happen in different ways. For example, you can give with your money, like $30. You can give with your resources. You can also give with your time and your talent. So at this time, the Food Pantry Ministry are looking for those that are willing to give their time and their talent. So if you're interested in volunteering, especially during this Thanksgiving, we would love to have you. Go ahead and mark your calendars for two very important volunteer meetings. One is Sunday, October the 27th, and the second is Sunday, November the 17th. Both meetings will be happening right after service in the Fellowship Hall, and I will do my best to keep those meetings short. Again, mark your calendars for one Sunday, October the 27th, and again, November the 17th. Remember, here at North Park, our mission is very clear. We love God, we love others, we serve others, and we share the gospel. And in sharing the gospel, I mean in serving others, we want to be a blessing to as many as we can this Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. Until next time, see you soon. Well, those are your announcements for the week. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Remember to love God, love others, serve others, and share the gospel. Amen. Amen. Pastor Ed, thank you so much for all the touching words. My God, I didn't know it was clergy month. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give today? Amen. Let's give. Amen. We give for the purposes of the kingdom of God and to give. Hallelujah. So that, amen, we can continue to do what we do as a church body. Amen. Hallelujah. We're all in this together. Light bill, we're in it together. Mortgage payment, we're in it together. Amen. Everything that we do here, we're in it together. But we're doing it for the building of the kingdom of God. Please pay attention to all those announcements. Amen. And, of course, if you're going to give toward the uh, turkey drive, we need that. Amen. It will be neat to volunteer for that. Cars just line up, and they come on through, and it gives you a chance to sometimes pray for people and to bless people who don't have. Uh, it's just a wonderful time. And so, amen. You want to be a part of that you should do that. Amen. All right, let us all stand. 
pray for you and dismiss you unless you want to stick around for this baptism. Hallelujah. Oh, are we here? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Not quite? Amen. Well, all right, you can, you can watch while you're marching around. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this soul being baptized. Lord, we ask you to bless the gift and the giver and are given unto you today. Thank you for this word today, Lord, and the worship today. Oh, God, help us to hide all these things in our heart that we live upright before you. Oh, God, we thank you for your great people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.